bienvenidos, and welcome to another daily vlog. Number eight, to be exact. We're halfway there, people. Today, we're getting a little bit later start in the day, but that's okay. We are heading to a coffee plantation. So I know we just did a coffee tour in Bogota, but today's gonna be very different. We're actually heading to a coffee farm where we're gonna learn the seed to cut process. Woo, almost tripped on that. Here in Salento, which is part of the coffee triangle in Colombia, which is where some of the best coffee in the world comes from. The coffee culture is so deeply ingrained in this region that it's actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site called the Coffee Cultural Landscape of Colombia. So we booked the premier tour at El Ocaso Tours. It's a coffee farm near here. I think it's the most popular one here in Salento. The tour starts at two o'clock and it's only an hour out of town. So we decided to walk and enjoy this beautiful nature. The whisper of the wind. Hola. Hola. Calling us to something more. What if we set out upon the waters, sail to we lose sight? So it's a little later in the afternoon now, but this morning we woke up super early, walked through town, it was so quiet and peaceful. Such a contrast from how it was yesterday with all the festivities and all the people walking around. We walked up this hill, which overlooks this valley, saw some parrots, such a beautiful area. This is who we are, this is where we So there's a bunch of Jeeps that keep passing us on this road and that's a great way to get around Salento to different areas. So they're called Willys here and they only cost a few bucks to go back and forth. It's a great way to get around. We just wanted to walk because the weather's great. One more kilometer to go. Reaching out beyond our hesitations Knowing how we've come so far I am Daniel Gomez and I'm gonna be your guide during this coffee tour, okay? I brought you here with a small coffee lab because I wanna show you how we do small experiments using small quantities of coffees. I wanna see you around this table because first, to be honest, I have to evaluate your sense of smell, okay? So we're gonna do a small sensory evaluation. Every single bottle has a specific odor that perhaps you can find in your coffee cup. So basically, I want that you just choose one bottle, whatever you want. Yes. Yeah, we are a winner, guys. Number 19. Honey. Let's see. Okay. First impression. The first impression. It's, it's number 27. It's yeah. sweet. It's sweet, yes, right. You're close. <laughs> it's sweet. It's what else? a little bit spicy. No, it's like. No. Oh, I'm terrible at this. Help me. Don't worry. Don't feel the pressure. It no. smells a little bit like honey. Yes. For me, a little bit like honey and caramel like, as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. a little earthy. It's a kind of nut. Oh, sesame? 
No. no. Uh, it's like smoke. Licorice. Oh, like smoke. 24 licorice? Yeah. Well, no. Licorice. She nailed it. The color almost tricked yeah. me, though. As the people say anise, and it's good. As during the tasting, you will taste first grade coffees, and also you will taste second grade. What is this one? This is awesome. Okay. It's winter. It's strong. It's sweet. It's Third one's my favorite. Probably you just walking around this night. So you can start as well. So we've smelled the fragrances and the aromas, and now we're going to taste them. I went straight for number three, which was my favorite. Yeah. Very acidic, but no bitterness. Okay. And the most popular kind of tree, guys, is the coffee arabica. Do you hear something about coffee arabica? Of course. Yes, it's the most popular kind of tree. In this country, guys, hmm. it's 90% of the coffee plantations that you will find in this country. Wow. So the main reason, guys, is the altitudes. Because you can grow up coffee as arabica in different altitudes, between 900 meters above sea level until 2,500 meters above sea level. So this is the ideal altitude for this kind of tree. More than 200 different varieties just from the coffee arabic. Okay, mm -hmm. you ready for the welcome? Yeah. Let's go. Okay. This country, guys, we still do it manual harvesting. It's always by hand. There is no machine. It doesn't matter the region. It's not only in this farm, not only in this region. I mean, in the whole country, there is no machine. So basically, the coffee pickers, they are in chairs to do the first quality selection. Basically, they have to search the cherries like this, come close. The most of them, when they ripe, turns red, and some of them turns completely yellow. Mm -hmm. It's like bringing back huckleberry picking memories. <laughs> you never went, don't kid. Don't <laughs> pretend. So the beginning of the tour was very similar to the coffee tour tasting that we did in Bogota. But I'm very excited for this part of the tour because we're going into the actual plantation and we're gonna go pick some coffee cherry beans and fill up our little baskets. So this is pretty awesome. He told us about these plants. I think they're called maracas, but they're natural mosquito repellent, which is amazing. There's some mosquitoes here today. Just find one of these, you take it and you just smack it. And you can see, it creates this liquid. You just rub it on yourself and actually smells pretty good too. That's pretty amazing. Nowadays, the coffee farmers from this region, they prefer to replace the coffee plantations from avocados plantations because they are more money. You will see a lot of different trees around the coffee plantations. And the most of times you will see bananas and plantains. You must know in this country, we have two different harvesting periods. The first one period is between April, May and June. It's the main harvest because it's where you will find a lot of quantity. Second period, guys, is between September, October, and November, which is right now. This is the most difficult harvesting time, so you have to search order the branch, okay? We have been let out into the wild, into the coffee plantation, to pick yellow and red cherry coffee beans. Not green. Not green, he said. Don't come back with any green ones. Please don't collect the green ones. If you collect the green ones, you're fired. He gave us all the lowdown on all the different types of bushes and coffee trees and everything like that so let's go find some oh, oh I think it's your red one he said you just pull it off you twist it and you pull it off what do you got there Tell me. this is a red one well it's red and yellow do you think that's ripe he said when you get it you need to taste it mmm it's sweet he said, don't chew it and don't swallow it. Just taste it. Does not taste like coffee at all. It tastes like almost like grape-ish. I really want to crunch this, but I'm just gonna spit them out. <laughs> mm. Okay, let's actually get some in my basket. Wow, this area is so beautiful though. So pretty. So even though this tour, the first part of this tour was very similar to the tour we did in Bogota, he has given us so much information on the origin of the coffee and information overload about all the coffee. So we've been learning lots. So it's it's been really fun. Well, those are all green, huh? Yeah. I don't see any 
three red ones. I feel like I'm failing right now. When did he say the harvesting months were? No. Now? I don't believe him. Okay, I found a really red one. Yay! I don't want to get in trouble for bringing back the wrong bean. Let's go back. This path looks like less trodden. So something that he told me is really sticking with me. He said, if you forget everything, if you forget the tour, if you forget his name, one thing to remember is the process that goes into picking all of the coffee beans. I mean, could you imagine being the worker that was out here picking these beans? You must know the real pickers, they earn money just per kilogram, just by weight. This is between 500 pesos per kilogram and no more than 1,000 pesos per kilogram. It's a shame, yes, because 1,000 pesos is less than 25 cents on dollar. Yes, it's less, less than this. And then in your countries, you pay more than 1,000 pesos for one kilo of coffee. Why they still do it by hand? Because guys, to be honest, they exceed the minimal salary. Because the minimal salary of this country is no more than 30,000 pesos per day. One professional picker can fill the basket twice a day. So you can fill the basket with 25 kilograms. And remember 1,000 pesos per kilogram, and if you fill the basket twice, perhaps one professional picker can collect between 40 and 50,000 pesos per day. That's why they prefer to still do it by hand. So please don't forget this process. You can forget the tour, my name, my face, the coffees. Just every morning, guys, don't forget how many hands are behind of your coffee cups, okay? I can't even imagine having to pick these. Like, just the amount of branches that are on these trees and bushes. The cherries are, like, deep inside of there. So that is a lot of work. Oh, oh is that? Red, that's a good red one. That's one, yeah. Oh. looking for if there's see anything red. I'm surprised you found a good red one, being colorblind. This is really thick. <laughs> I don't think you should go this way. You're good. Yeah, these are some good ones. Can we find one? No, yeah. and it's green on the bottom and I don't want to pick it. It is really hard to find a bright red one. I mean, there's like reddish green ones. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh, it's so much fun trekking through there. Oh my gosh, yeah. That was an adventure just trying to get through the bushes. But we have a few beans. Tommy got the best, biggest, brightest red one. And now we're going to head back and find our group. Whoa, you Let's did see. all that just now? Did you get the yellow ones? Yeah, here. This is a yellow tree. Let me show you. I'm colorblind. Oh. Huh, really? So yellow and green oh and red. God. It's not good. I can never. <laughs> it's the worst job and for someone when it's colorblind. Oh, never, <laughs> never. Okay, with the green? I can yes. never. Here on top, you will find the best yellow. Oh, okay. Right, get in there. okay. Remember, it's it's another variety, but it's also Arabica. Yellow tabby variety. Okay. Look at this, right here in the front. Two good red ones. Really good red one. Yes, I found the yellow one. Look at that. Mmm, I love eating these things. Okay, I found two really good yellow varieties. I like the yellow ones a lot. They're much sweeter than the red ones. You wanna try one? Yeah. Oh, they're so slimy. Check these out though. You can see the bean there almost, you know? Mm. A little sweet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the skin tastes better than the fruit inside. No kidding. The fruit inside, it's, it's very sour and juicy and the skin is sweet and fresh. Oh. Tastes really good. <gasps> okay. Yeah. Ooh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you can get it. Try wow. the skin, just bite it like an apple. You just knocked that off the tree for me. Ah, no so worries. bite it like an apple? Yeah, like yeah, dig in. I don't know if I trust him. <laughs> a lemon with the skin? I know, I want to see my face too. 
don't know if my teeth are sharp enough. Yeah. It's not as better as I thought it was gonna be. Is not it good? at all. Yeah, it's pretty Sweet. good. Oh, wow, that is sour. That is delicious. <laughs> yeah, it's like a whole experience shaking it off the tree and picking it up off the ground and biting it. Mm. Remember, the pickers, they are in charge to do the first quality selection. But when they finish the picking day, they are in charge to do the second quality selection. Second quality selection, guys, is about density. When they finish the picking day, they put the cherries inside pools. And then we're gonna fill the pool with water. So the contact with the cherries and the water, you will see some cherries that float on the surface. Cherries that float means that we're eating by the small insect. So have less density, less properties, there's nothing from inside. So that's why float stays on the surface. This is the second grey coffees, the sample number four. So basically you taste it before coffees with insects, with parasites, with proteins, okay? Gross. Sorry guys, <laughs> sorry. Extra protein. But it's true. Yeah, protein. But it's true guys. And the cherries that goes on the bottom is the specialty coffees, the first grey coffees. It's the easier and the quicker way to separate. Total harvest guys, sometimes between 20 and 25% is second grey coffees. So the second quality selection takes place inside the black tank. To do the process, the first step is just put the cherries. We have to remove the skin and then we're gonna process just the coffee beans. Because the most of the time, the skin from the coffee is reused it as compost. Yeah, you pass it, well done. Well done. <laughs> Yo. Oh my God. Y'all really got to work. Mil pesos por un kilo. Mil pesos por un Remember, 1,000 per kilogram. <laughs> okay, so. 200. <laughs> yeah, See? not very much. 300, yeah, it's getting better. Basically, it is the best way to separate the shell from the skin because basically it's just friction taking its place inside. So basically what the machines do is just put the cherries right here. So meanwhile we turn this machine, you will see the beans falling right here. So the unit of using our beans takes longer time. Okay. <laughs> From the coffee process, we reduce everything. To be honest, as I told you before, we are not organic farm but we are sustainable because we reuse everything, guys. This is the second layer that the coffee beans have only when it's already dry. In Spanish, guys, we call pergamino. In English, you can call dry parchment because the most of times we reuse to make papers. Let's see where we dry real coffees because this one is boring. Nowadays, we are drying the coffees under the sunlight. So, let me show you. So we're going to see the drying process now. They have to keep them covered with plastic because it rains a lot here in Colombia. So he said we can touch them, smell them, taste them. So let's go see the beans dry. <gasps> Feels it's so crunchy. Yeah. Smells good. So these are the ones that are washed and drying. And then the darker ones are the ones that get left with like the slimy sugar coating and it caramelizes as they dry. So I just peeled the coffee bean with like the sugar coating on it. It's like green and white on the inside. It's before it's roasted, so obviously it's not brown yet. Now you're getting to work. They really just invite people here on tours to do all the work. We pick the beans, we peel the beans, we dry the beans, and then we're gonna get a cup of coffee at the end. <laughs> Worth it, right? So the green bean, this is how we export the coffees to United States. Mm -hmm. And then you are in charge just to roast them. So you've reused that as fuel. Well. Over there you will see another small compost area in which we reuse all the coffee shell. So we learned all about the Cisco shell and now we are about to go see how they remove it from the green the green bean that's dried on the inside. And using the pilon, that's why we know it's in Colombia, it is a traditional way to remove the shell, just like this, by friction. So the main trouble, guys, we can broke the beans and it's quite difficult to separate the shell from the beans. Okay. Nowadays, to remove the Cisco shell in a faster way, 
we have to use another German invention. All the green beans falls right here. Meanwhile, the filters are shaking and shaking and shaking. We separate the coffee beans by size. If we move different size together to rows, the smaller size takes faster time to rows, and the bigger size takes longer time to rows. That's why we separate them first, and then we're gonna roast them. So the roasting process, guys, takes place in the next room, over there. So if you see, guys, if you turn down over there, you will see the only roasting machine that the France has, because during the roasting process, it takes no more than 10 or 11 minutes to roast the coffees. They are sorting the coffee beans one by one. So basically, they are training just to recognize just the brown color. Brown is good. Black is bad and yellow is really bad. And now, time for the most important thing. Taste more coffees. <laughs> yes, true. So let's make some coffee. Let's brew some coffees. We'll see you again at the coffee lab, guys. Let's go. If you want to find the natural sweetness from your coffees, use lower temperatures. In this case, I will use between 85 and 87 degrees Celsius. In future, it's a flower in tea, as you see, guys. And finally, you deserve your coffee cups. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Remember, the most important thing, the main purpose, just don't forget this process. Don't forget how many hands are behind of your coffee cups. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 Salud. Salud. Chin chin. Prost. One job. Wow, what an amazing tour this was. Daniel was so informative, amazing. Thank you again, man. So cool learning all the processes, so much information. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I think we're riding back on one of those Jeeps. So I'm gonna try to hop on the back and get some shots. Thanks for watching you guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm just squeezing you. Okay? Yeah, baby, hold on. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're on the way. Here we go. We're all squeezed in. Gracias, <laughs> Roberto. This is becoming a real production. <laughs> you got a gaffer now. Look at that. <laughs>